oh man, I have all these questions that people keep asking me and dang, I, I guess I could answer them right now, but I wish there was like a, someone I can call, maybe someone that just like looks like the perfect lender that someone put in a laboratory together, perfect hairline, perfect videos. If I can just call him real quick to see if he can help me with these, that would be amazing. Oh, oh, hey, Kyle. Oh, I got a, I got a call from him. Uh, can we do this later? Is that fine? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> How's it going, man? Oh, was that real? I thought that was uh, the fake intro. I thought you were actually getting a call in. You got me, dude. Your oh, acting no. chops are, are premier. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for everybody, so this, hi everybody. So this is Javier Vidanga, and of course, I have my friend here, Kyle Seegers, with me. And today, what we're going to do is, uh, since we're doing a video together, we're going to talk about the five most basic, commonly asked questions that we receive, probably on a daily basis. Now, I figured for anybody looking to start their home buying journey, it'd be nice to hear from both of our perspectives what we think about the general questions that they may have, because it is usually a starting point for most people, right? Let me start off with an easy one, okay? A uh, multi-layered question, but I think something you might get a lot, you know. Everybody knows at this point, if they start researching FHA and convention or the two main ones, maybe uh, maybe USDA or VA if you're in a particular area or kind of person. But there's always these like first-time home buyer grant programs or like this NACA, the nonprofit loans, the portfolio loans that are like super special. So for someone who's looking to buy, how would they start researching these? And should they go for these kind of programs or just stick with the classics? Right. I think what ends up happening is these terms, especially first time home buyer, tends to be a, a marketing term that a lot of companies use. And first time home buyer programs don't ex exist as much as they did kind of pre housing crash. Uh, they just really aren't around as much. Now there are some local programs. So what I would always recommend to people is no matter what loan program you're looking for, you wanna be able to actually shop with multiple people, right? Talk to a, a broker, a credit union, a bank, a direct lender, and then explore those programs that that company might be working with. Because what a lot of people don't realize is companies themselves are the ones who work with these local programs. If you are looking for, for instance, a local down payment assistance program, or for instance, California has, um, their housing finance agency has a down payment assistance program, but they're gonna work with specific lenders. Uh, so it's not a program you have to find on your own and find a lender. You're mainly gonna be shopping with multiple lenders and then ask them about maybe some of the programs um, that they can have. For those who have their down payment saved, they have solid credit, and they still want to just try it um, at this kind of program, do you think it's still worth their time to check it out? Yeah, that is a question that comes in so much because our assumption is that it's free money. If somebody's saying, I'll give you X thousands of dollars, why wouldn't I take it? And I think it's fair to get a quote. It's fair to, to see the options and compare it to something else. The issue that I see though is a, from a long-term cost, if we're actually looking at how much does a normal conventional loan versus an FHA loan with down payment assistance, uh, if we compare those over a long period of time, I rarely have ever seen a down payment assistance loan be better financially for somebody long term. Could it help you get into a house? Possibly. But is there going to be a cost with that money? Even if it's a grant, it's still going to have either a higher rate to it, maybe higher costs, or you're going to be stuck in the home for a period of years before you have to pay back that grant. Uh, to piggyback off your point, Kyle, I think a lot of people have a, an identity problem, right? They they think, well, because I'm a first time home buyer, then I must use a first time home buyer loan, right? But once again, it's just a marketing term. So a lot of times, I tell people just don't use that term because you call a realtor or lender, they'll oh, I'm a first time home buyer. They're just gonna be like, let's, or they're gonna be like, hey, let's take advantage of this person. Just being like, hey, I'm a strong buyer, or hey. I'm a buyer with these kind of questions would be a lot better than just starting off and saying, I'm a first time buyer. So you're putting yourself in a category. You think you need a certain type of loan when the reality is all buyers are the same. It's just depending on your, your strength of your buying power and also how well qualified you are. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kyle. That was amazing. I appreciate the time. Uh, nice video with you. Have a good one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got another question here for money in Phoenix from the discord channel. One of our moderators, what are some of the biggest, um, things that people might overthink or misconceptions they might have about the buying process that really they're just kind of tricking themselves into over the overthinking situations. Uh, yeah, the overthinking problem is huge. And what's funny is you know, there's a lot of YouTube comments that come in and I find myself the, the best answer that I can provide is just a, yep, yep, that works. That's fine. That's okay. I think we tend to overthink our financial situation just a little bit. Where a lender's going, going to document and look at a lot of things, 
But for the most part, they're not necessarily looking at this to um, try to find reasons on why we can't qualify for a loan. And so, especially when it comes to maybe some more new unique financial situations, um, we can tend to overthink it to the point of saying like, is it okay? Am I still gonna qualify with this? For the most part, if you're following some of the general guidance that like on Javier's videos or some of my videos talking about things like credit score, debt to income ratio, how much money do we have in the bank account? Those are gonna be the main things that help us qualify for a loan so we can get into a home. Um, not some of these little smaller things that I know they may, might seem big to us, but to a lender, they're usually not a huge deal um, to be able to move forward with. Yeah, for sure. And I was going to say something. Dude, why are we so on the same page? It's really scary. Oh, man. <laughs> well, who's your mom again? Are we have the same mom? Are we sure we're not long lost brothers? I, I, um, think, I think we do. Okay, there you go. Uh, I have the I'll, same cactus shirt, too. Uh, dude, well, I, I'm just jealous. I'm dude. jealous of the cactus shirt. Look at that. They got they got little flowers on them, too. Got to represent Arizona. Oh, um, so, yeah, I would say this. I mean, it was kind of similar. Um, it's just people... Th think that oh no but my situation is different i'm special you know so you know i i cannot do this because of this right or i can do this because of this and they'll make an exception for me it's kind of i know you make fun of me for being like a nerd gamer or whatever but like sometimes there's an armor or weapon that you need a, so a certain level class to wield or you need certain stats to wield same thing okay your credit just has to be a certain number there's no special exceptions well you know me i have this credit score and this no just is your credit score that high do, do, do you have two years of employment? And if there's something weird, still move forward. And, you know, other things. So just think of it as a general term, at least to start. Obviously, once you start, if you find out there's hiccups and adjust, right? But if you fall, if you think you fit the general picture, just don't stop hesitating and just start and just figure out if you're good or not. Yeah. So, yeah. And going back to your earlier point, Javier, you mentioned this idea of like, you're kind of pre-classifying yourself as I'm a first time buyer, or I know you've mentioned this with like, uh, the, the DACA program too, is you get tunnel vision. If you classify yourself in this way, where you only think about things in a specific way, well, I'm a first time buyer. That means that everything's more shaky when that's really not true. As long as, you know, we're, we're following the advice that's been given to us. We're watching videos like this. We're probably going to be pretty well off when we go to, to purchase a home. We just don't want to classify ourselves as a first time buyer and get locked into that idea that now everything is is shaky when we're moving forward. If you watch all of our videos, you're going to be in a, probably not as much information because there's experience that agents have and lenders have, but they're, they're going to be shocked by how much you know, right? So to like have some confidence in yourselves, guys. If you're already out here on YouTube learning, you already have an upper hand. Next question for you, Mr. Seagraves. Um, or Mr. Win the House You Love? What do you prefer? What's your real name? It's Mr. Love. Oh, uh, Mr. Love. <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> if Doctor, Doctor Love. Um, yeah. A little longer question. Um, what's the, Are you seeing some indicators on the lending side on a maybe some kind of shifts going on, like a volumes of closings, appraisals coming in lower, uh, a certain type of loan being preferred? Uh, you know, just, just some general things that kind of just stand out to you? Sure. Yeah. For the most part, in how competitive this market is the one of the biggest problems that people are facing is the type of loan that they're using. Um, so, you know, if we're going from like a ranking list of what loans are the best for the most part, conventional loans are going to be at the top of the list. And that's not from which loan is best necessarily for the buyer. It's more of how does the seller perceive it? So the seller perceives somebody with a conventional loan being somebody who has their finances ready to go and is able to purchase normally is more seen as somebody who's more well qualified. Unfortunately, even though that's not necessarily true, where loans like FHA, USDA and especially VA tend to get discriminated against a little bit because the assumption is, well, they can't qualify for conventional, so they're probably not as well qualified as a buyer, meaning that deal might not go through. That's kind of what a seller tends to think. And so normally that's one of the hardest parts that I'm seeing in this market is, um, you know, here in Dayton, Ohio, we have a really strong FHA market. A lot of buyers use FHA because that's what they need to qualify for. And they ask for closing costs and they're not able to get their offer to go through because they're using FHA. So with that, normally what I would recommend for somebody is at, talking to your lender, if you qualify for FHA um, or these other government programs, asking what can I do to qualify conventional? We normally don't ask that question and the lender just assumes that we don't have the patience for the next three to six months for whatever it would take for us to transition to conventional. And so, you know, that difference might be, maybe we only need to spend two months working on our credit score and we can all of a sudden now qualify conventional. And that puts us in a much better place to be able to qualify for, uh, or to be able to get our offer through um, when there's competitive offers. 
So you're saying one of the biggest trends you've seen is this preference towards conventional to FHA. Are you seeing a, um, anything with the appraisal side, a higher, lower appraisals coming in? Or is it still pretty the yeah. same? From what I'm seeing, there isn't a this huge discrepancy with appraisals. Um, on Again, on, on government loans, you're going to tend to see appraisals come in shorter than they might on conventional. But that's always been um, an issue, that's, though. That's not yeah, that's tend to be the nature of, of uh, the government loans. Um, but as far as like, you know, you're seeing home prices increasing, but they have valid data to support it. So some people are saying like home prices are um, skyrocketing more than they should, but there's actually appraisal data to support it and appraisals are coming in matching those. Now, are there more short appraisals than there were a year or two ago before we saw this boom? Yeah, but they're not to the point where uh, some of these home you know, increased home prices aren't being justified by actual data of supporting comparable homes. Awesome point. I mean, I looked up the questions for both of our channels, the comments. I mean, a lot of people ask, you know, how much do I, I basically the general consensus is, hey, I have X, I have X, can I qualify? Or they go, I have this credit score, I have that credit score, I have this income, can I qualify? So I'm not going to sit here and tell you or ask you what kind of credit score you need to qualify for what, because they can, for quite frankly, watch our channels for that, right? But um, to you, I mean, I guess the general question to kind of twist that around is, how can somebody figure out if they qualify, other than commenting on a YouTuber's channel, if they just have a general idea if they qualify without talking to a lender? Yeah, so I think there's a couple things in there. Um, can I plug my own, <laughs> can I plug my own stuff? How dare you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, go for it. The first number that I'd, I'd want somebody to look at is their credit score, okay? The two big numbers for most lenders when you're qualifying for a loan is credit score and debt to income ratio, so credit score. Right now, because of COVID, a lot of lenders just aren't lending below a 640 credit score. There's too much risk in the secondary market for people to wanna take that on, and so lenders aren't allowing it. So ideally, we wanna have a 640 and higher. And then people tend to ask, you know, what's the best credit score to qualify? It's the highest credit score. The higher your credit score is, the easier it is to qualify for a loan, okay? So right now, ideally you wanna be at 640 and higher. Um, then the next big number is your debt to income ratio. Your debt to income ratio is how much do you pay in minimum monthly debts divided by your gross monthly income, okay? And this gives a lender a, a, an approximation of how much you can afford. Now it's important to remember that like, a lender's not a financial advisor. They frankly don't care about your ability to pay back uh, or your ability to keep up with your finances. They're only focused on the risk of the loan for themselves. So a lender's gonna give you a lot more money than you probably should take on. But your debt to income ratio is going to be able to show you um, or show the lender what kind of risk they're taking on when they give you this monthly payment. Uh, and so a good number for your debt to income ratio um, would be to stay under 45%. Now there are programs that go all the way up to almost 57%, um, which is crazy <laughs> in my opinion, but if we stay below that 45% number, um, that's usually gonna give us a good approximation of how much we could qualify for. Um, and I do have a calculator for this for people where you can put in your own income and debts and things like that. Um, they can text hashtag max price to 937-358-6542 if they're interested in that. Can't believe you just plugged your own stuff in my, my I video, I know, man. I know. <laughs> my gosh. Uh, let's just say Kyle and I both have freebies to give out that help you calculate that. And I think we've made excessive videos about how to figure out your detail. One thing I do have to add to that is there's a huge difference between what you qualify for and what you can afford. So um, don't, I mean, find out what you qualify for, sure. But just make sure to do your, after you watch that video, have your next video be what's the best budget for the mortgage, right? I made a video called... Uh, what, what do you really, how much housing you afford or something like that? I mean, you really want to make sure to explore different models of what people think about budgeting. You know, the Dave Ramsey 25% net, there's a 28% gross, there's a bunch of different models. So even though you qualify for a million dollars, doesn't mean you should, you know what I'm saying? So, and one final question for you, that the number one question we probably receive on an hourly basis, should I buy a house right now or should I wait? What, what's, your, what's your take on this? Well, I right now someone else is using my crystal ball, so Dang I need it. to stop lending. So you're a crystal ball. Smallhorn is crystal ball. I'm time machine. You got to get your own, man. You have to come up with something. Oh, dang it! Dang like it! The DeLorean um, or something. You look like a Back in the Future plan. <laughs> this is a tough question. Um, but what I 
If we kind of look historically, there's never been necessarily a time to buy unless you can see the whole thing and you can look into the future and you can look into the past. Um, I think the best thing to do is to focus less on the external things that can impact the buying decision and more on the internal things. Um, you know, do I have savings? Do I know exactly how much I'm comfortable spending on a home? Otherwise, I'm going to get kind of thrown into the rush of everything that's going on. Um, is my credit where it needs to be? Do I actually know why I want to buy? Um, or am I just buying because rates are low and people tell me that I should get in before the market increases even further? Um, kind of what I like to use is the analogy of like, you know, when I was in college, I saw all these people getting... Uh, engaged. They had bad relationships and they were getting engaged um, with the assumption that like, maybe if we get married, things will get better. And it turns out that that doesn't work. And then they're like, well, maybe if we have like kids, things will get better. And it just makes the problem worse, right? So making these huge buying decisions, while maybe not being in the best spot financially, is only going to amplify the problems that we have, um, is not actually going to do anything to make us feel more confident or set us up better financially in the future. Man, I don't know we we're going to give relationship advice here, but I like it. I know, right? Um, you like that? Yeah. My, it's it's never been the right time to buy for people. You know, a few years ago, people would say it's not the good time to buy. So have solace in knowing that no one is ever comfortable in the time they're buying. No one ever is. Like literally five years ago when it was a perfect time to buy, people were freaking out. So you're always going to have these nerves. It's always going to be this fear. So at the end of the day, you evaluate your personal situation. Are you strong enough financially and mentally right now to take on the challenge of buying a house? And are you buying long term? If all these things are yes, then consider it. Go through your options. Make sure to, you know, pros and cons it. You know, don't listen to all those guys on the conspiracy theories on YouTubers telling you, oh, yeah, it's, uh, the government this, the government that and all this. You know, um, they always have American flag as their profile picture, too. Um, yeah, you know, just. Just make your own decision. You're smart. You're, you're capable. So, Kyle, thank you so much for that. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for that, man. Um, so now, um, one of the other common questions we get is, how do I compete against cash offers, right? So here's what we're going to do. You have a video for Storm Store for us about comparing different offers. So what do you have? What, are we, what is this video going to be about exactly? Yeah, so we're kind of going to get into the mind of a seller a little bit. Normally as buyers, we're kind of shielded from that side. So we're going to pull back the curtain and see what does a seller actually see when offers come in. And then I'm going to have you give some advice on what offers look the strongest to you and then what you would suggest to a buyer to beat out uh, some of those offers in there as well. Thank you guys for watching. Go check out Kyle's video now, which should have been posted the same exact time as mine. It'll be popping up on my face now. Go check it out after watching this video and then so you can get the best out of both worlds. So Kyle, thanks once again for being on the channel. I'm always the number one seed graver. No matter what anyone says, I will always be number one seed graver. So thank you for stopping by. I'll see you on your <laughs> thanks, channel. Thanks, All right. Awesome. Barely, right on time. Oof.